question 17, um, I'm going to subtract this over. multiply both sides by dx and then divide both sides by a y or divide it by a negative y um, whichever <coughs> so let's go ahead and distribute this negative x minus 1 okay so there's the variable separated and um, we can go ahead and integrate both sides now. So over here, this is one we're supposed to have memorized. Um, over here, to do these two in parts, actually, I'm going to just factor this negative out front. Negative um, so raise the power by 1, divide by the new power, raise the power by 1, divide by the new power. So now let's go ahead and <clears throat> try to solve for C. They did give us an initial condition of um, negative 2, 1. So plugging in 1 for Y. Negative 2 for X. Negative 2 for X. We should be able to solve from C for this. All right, so that would be 0 e to the 0 power, so it gives me 1. Let's see, this would be 4 times 2, or divided by 2 would be 2, minus 2, so this would be 0. So I'm getting c is 0. All right, and if we go and plug that in, up here where I started plugging in my x and y and solving for c. Looks like I get to natural log absolute value of y is I'm going to distribute negative one half x squared minus x and then plus c which I now know is plus zero. Um, now let's go ahead and let's try to solve for y. So exponentiate each side e to the log base e of absolute value of y will come out to be y. We got over here, um, well, we've got a big mess of stuff. Technically, we're solved for y, um, so we could stop here. Okay, and then that's what my answer looks like. Um, your textbook kind of rewrites some of this by factoring out a negative and um, putting the whole thing over 2, kind of getting a common denominator between those two, um, but that would be optional.